come on my dears let us proceed further in chapter number 1 this is the first lecture in the newly prepared studio i hope you will like it you will try to appreciate it okay thank you let us study further the next article is about eddy currents eddy currents my dears do you know the dictionary meaning of eddies e double d i e s eddies means anything which is circulating on a closed path correct that is called eddies you must have heard the word you must have heard the word whirlpool whirlpool is nothing but the stream of water circulating on small small circular closed paths and such streams is known as eddies okay in that sense the word is used here eddy currents let me tell you they are none but induced currents okay fine now who had observed this eddy currents first of all history says that it was none but mr foucault in the year 1895 in the year 1895 mr foucault f o u c a u l t mr foucault had observed this uh, currents first of all so initially in his memory this currents were also known as foucault currents foucault currents let me now give you introduction of this eddy currents what are they i'm showing you see up till now we have studied about induced currents correct but those induced currents we had discussed taking place in some coil made up of thin wire or in some metallic frame again made up of thin wire but not necessary that induced currents are obtained always in a linear object like wire not necessary now to get the formation of eddy currents we require some solid conducting body consider some metallic block metallic disc like that when the body is solid conductor and in that solid body if there is a change of magnetic flux or if any magnetic flux is cut by the body then we find that some induced currents are developed in them and those induced currents are circulating they are flowing in small small closed paths these currents are called induced currents but these induced currents are given specific name and that specific name is eddy currents they are always formed in a plane perpendicular to magnetic flux and their directions are determined using lenz law how are they currents i mean how are they produced i'm showing you let us consider various examples to understand the formation of eddy currents look first of all consider falling metallic disc okay consider this metallic disc metallic disc okay and it is allowed to fall freely when it is allowed to fall freely naturally its acceleration is equal to gravitational acceleration okay fine now suppose we have some uniform magnetic field which is right now perpendicularly inside the plane of the figure perpendicularly inside the plane of the figure fine then you know any magnetic field line which is perpendicularly inside the plane of the figure is shown by symbol of cross had it been outside then dot because it is inside then we show it by symbol of cross so here we have magnetic field inside the plane of the figure fine now in that magnetic field we just drop some metallic disc okay at that time also it is falling downwards correct but now as it moves downwards what it will do it will cut the magnetic field lines and because some magnetic flux is cut by the falling disc it so happens that there are some induced currents which are produced inside the disc but direction of that induced current is always obeying lenz law and according to lenz law what should happen 
the direction of induced current should be always such that it can oppose the very cause producing it. Now here these induced currents are found to be flowing in anti-clockwise direction. Why anti-clockwise? Because if they flow this way that is anti-clockwise when you look from here correct then those induced currents will have their own magnetic field which is produced perpendicularly outside this way that is opposite to externally applied magnetic field. External applied magnetic field is inside the plane of the figure and induced magnetic field is outside the plane of the figure. In short they are opposite in direction that is how we can say it tries to oppose the very cause producing it ok fine. Now here there is a production of induced currents in a closed path which we call eddy currents they are right now flowing in anti clockwise direction ok fine. Suppose you are applying the magnetic field say external magnetic field is perpendicularly outside suppose correct. Then what will happen these induced currents will flow clockwise such that they will produce their own magnetic field perpendicularly inside meaning thereby induced magnetic field and applied magnetic field are opposite to each other ok fine. Now tell me because of this induced currents you know what happens there is a lens force exerted on this falling disc and you know lens force is a resistive force it will be exerted on the disc in a direction opposite to its motion motion is downwards so lens force is vertically upwards and because of presence of resistive force you know what happens motion of this disc is retarded and that is why I have written here this acceleration is less than gravitational acceleration. So, it cannot be considered as a free fall this is a free fall here motion of this disc is a free fall but motion of this disc is not a free fall because acceleration is less than gravitational acceleration ok fine. Let us now consider second example where eddy currents are produced consider again a uniform magnetic field which is applied perpendicularly inside the plane of the figure in which there is a metallic disc which is rotated suppose clockwise ok. When you rotate it clockwise at that time it cuts the magnetic field lines and whenever magnetic flux is cut by a conducting body you know what will happen eddy currents will be produced. Here eddy currents are produced when you view from outside eddy currents are produced this way that is anti clockwise. When you view from front side this way you will find the direction of induced current that is eddy currents anti clockwise that is why they will produce their own magnetic field outside. Applied magnetic field is inside induced magnetic field is perpendicularly outside that is opposite to applied magnetic field ok. So, here again we get production of eddy currents fine. <coughs> there was a fellow with name Mr. Argo correct. This fellow had demonstrated practically the existence of eddy currents how I am showing you. In textbook they have not drawn any figure you will not understand better you look here. We have one magnetic needle which is suspended from rigid support with the help of some thread or some wire ok. Initially that magnetic needle is lying horizontally and steadily ok. Below the magnetic needle we have one solid uh, metallic circular disc fine. Now what we do we just rotate this disc ok. When you rotate the disc you know what will happen see this magnetic needle is nothing but a small magnet and surrounding to this magnet it has its own magnetic field in which there are magnetic field lines. Now as you rotate this disc you know what will happen the magnetic field lines will be cut by the rotating disc and if magnetic flux is cut as I said earlier come on eddy currents are generated and here the eddy currents are produced 
and after that you know what happens when you rotate this disc along with the rotation of the disc this needle also starts rotating because eddy currents are produced because of relative motion between disc and the needle so if the induced currents which are eddy currents has to oppose the very cause producing it then right now that cause is relative motion if relative motion is to be opposed then this needle also so start rotating in the same manner with the same angular speed as that of the disc so along with the rotation of the disc the needle also starts rotating with the same speed such that there is no relative motion between these two correct so when you rotate this disc though there is no physical contact between needle and the disc you will notice practically that this needle starts rotating correct that indirectly proves the existence of eddy currents correct fine then number 4 consider a metallic disc which is present in a time varying magnetic field suppose direction of magnetic field is perpendicularly inside the plane of the figure okay but suppose the magnitude of magnetic field strength of magnetic field increases correct and because of that what will happen the magnetic flux link with this disc will also increase okay whenever there is a change in magnetic flux you know induced currents will get developed and here induced currents are produced as i explained earlier when you view from front side induced currents are obtained anti clockwise this way correct such that that induced current will produce its own magnetic field perpendicularly outside that is opposite to inside externally applied magnetic field externally applied magnetic field is inside and induced magnetic field is outside fine suppose applied magnetic field is decreasing in magnitude suppose then what will happen then induced currents that is eddy currents will fl start flowing clockwise if the eddy currents are flowing clockwise then it will produce its own magnetic field perpendicularly inside see anyhow these eddy currents will try to produce magnetic field in such a manner such that it can oppose the change in the magnitude of externally applied magnetic field if strength of externally applied magnetic field increases perpendicularly inside then induced magnetic field is produced outside correct so it will try to decrease the resultant magnetic field but if the strength of applied magnetic field decreases then induced currents will flow in such a manner it can produce their own magnetic field perpendicularly inside such that the resultant magnetic field will increase in short eddy currents will flow always in such a manner in such a direction whereby they can oppose the change in magnitude of externally applied magnetic field i repeat eddy currents will always flow in that direction whereby they can oppose the change in magnitude of externally applied magnetic field okay once again i repeat eddy currents always flow in that direction whereby they can oppose the change in magnitude of externally applied magnetic field okay fine now let us consider another example of production of eddy currents we are going to understand one phenomenon which is called electromagnetic damping my dear damping means decreasing damping means decreasing now in which sense this word is used i am showing you here we have two magnetic poles of some strong and permanent magnet say this is north pole and say this is south pole you know direction of magnetic field between the poles is from north to south this way from north to south okay fine now in this externally applied magnetic field we have suspended one metallic plane disc and that disc is like this okay it is suspended in a vertical plane fine now what we do we just uh, give little jerk to this uh, disc 
when we give little jerk this disc will start oscillating this way when disc is oscillating this way in a vertical plane you know what will happen it will be just constantly moving out of the magnetic field then entering inside the magnetic field again going out of the magnetic field again entering inside the magnetic field like that okay so there will be constant change in magnetic flux link with the disc whenever there is a change in magnetic flux link with the disc you know what will happen eddy currents will be produced and here the eddy currents are produced in such a direction such that the externally applied magnetic field can be opposed externally applied magnetic field is from north to south this way in order to oppose that magnetic field the induced current should flow when you view from here this way they should flow anti clockwise and when they flow anti clockwise this way then they will produce magnetic field opposite to applied magnetic field okay that is how we get here production of eddy currents fine now if you want to decrease the amount of eddy currents then you know what you should do you should decrease the overall volume of the conducting body if you want to decrease the volume of this conducting body then one of the way is this we can prepare such a slots we can prepare such a slots in which you can see this much part of the conducting sheet or conducting disc is removed and when you remove you can prepare such a slots and thereby you can decrease the overall volume fine now here what happens when this disc is oscillating because of bigger volume bigger amount of eddy currents are produced bigger amount of lens force is constantly acting on this disc and you know lens force is resistive force during the oscillatory motion if there is a constant uh, resistive force then because of exertion of that resistive force what will happen amplitude of oscillation of this disc will go on decreasing as the amplitude goes on decreasing as the amplitude goes on decreasing you know what will happen after some time this disc will come to rest this very phenomenon in which amplitude of oscillation goes on decreasing because of the production of eddy currents is only known as electromagnetic damping electromagnetic damping okay here damping is more because lens force is more why lens force is more because of greater amount of eddy current why greater amount of eddy current because of greater volume now here we have decreased the volume so in place of such a disc if you place such a disc then what will happen here because of less volume less amount of eddy current less amount of eddy current then less amount of lens force if resistive force is less naturally damping will be less and the decrease of amplitude will be also less so i mean to say such a disc can oscillate for quite long time okay here electromagnetic damping is more here damping is less that's why such a disc can oscillate for a long time okay now how to decrease the amount of eddy currents see in case of transformer about which we will study in the next chapter one iron medium is present at the center which is called soft iron core medium core c o r e core means central medium okay fine that core we are using made up of soft iron and suppose that block of soft iron is like this here because of greater volume we have lot of eddy currents produce and you know if i amount of current passes through r resistance for t time then it will generate i square rt amount of heat and ultimately that heat energy develop inside this core will try to heat up this body will try to increase the temperature and ultimately that energy will be getting dissipated outside ultimately it is a loss of energy correct such a loss of energy is called heat loss and that is due to eddy currents so if you want to minimize that heat loss then you should minimize the amount of eddy currents then how to decrease the amount of eddy currents i am showing you 
instead of taking one big block as a core instead of that you are, what you can do you can just divide it into large number of thin layers now you can see here all these layers are electrically isolated but what we do just to make them electrically isolated from each other what we do we just cover them by a layer of non conducting substance normally we call it varnish so there is a layer of varnish provided on the surface of separated parts and that is how we make them electrically isolated fine and then here because this whole block is divided into thin layers then then also we have eddy currents but amount of eddy currents has been reduced considerably because of presence of non conducting medium between different layers okay this is how we can just decrease the amount of eddy currents fine now my dears let us see some of the useful applications of eddy currents in our day to day life in textbook all these explanations are not explained nicely that total explanation is not there in your syllabus just try to know some points about these applications look first application we study that is in induction furnace in case of induction furnace you know what we do we just apply high frequency ac ac means alternating current and because of application of high frequency alternating current we have time varying magnetic field which is just changing in magnitude and in direction very quickly and that time varying speedily changing magnetic field is applied on some ore and you know in that ore there are different types of metals which are present you know ultimately what will happen on those metals this uh, time varying magnetic field is applied and because of that those metals will have time varying magnetic flux so as time passes on the magnetic flux link with those metals will also change and because of speedily changing magnetic fluxes you know what will happen lot of amount of eddy currents are produced in those metals and those eddy currents will try to increase the temperature of those metals so ultimately for the whole amount of ore the temperature will increase but you know different metals have different melting points so when temperature of a particular metal has reached its uh, melting point then it will start melting and that melt molten metal can be separated from the remaining metals can be separated from the ore so this is how using induction furnace in which there is application of eddy currents we can separate the given metal okay fine then in case of speedometer there is also application of eddy currents you know speedometer is a meter which is employed in the vehicle to measure its instantaneous speed inside that speedometer we have small magnet which keeps on rotating whose angular speed is directly proportional to linear speed of the vehicle if linear speed is more then angular speed of the magnet is more if linear speed of the vehicle is less then angular speed is less now actually that magnet is uh, rotating in an aluminum drum surrounding to that magnet we have some aluminum drum okay now because of rotation of inside magnet there is a constant change in magnetic flux associated with the drum and because of that eddy currents get developed now in order to oppose this uh, production of eddy currents you know what should that drum should do drum also should rotate in the direction of rotation of magnet if both central magnet and surrounding drum if both rotate together if both rotate together with the same angular speed then there is no relative motion no relative motion no cutting of magnetic field lines no change of magnetic flux no production of eddy currents so ultimately what happens that surrounding drum also start rotating and just attached to that drum we have some pointer and that pointer also deflects along with the rotation of the drum 
okay fine now depending upon the speed of the vehicle that pointer some is showing you some deflection if speed is less then amount of deflection is less if speed is more amount of deflection is more so by just noting the deflection obtained in the pointer of that meter we can judge the speed of the vehicle okay fine then we go for electric brake electric brake my dears all of you have enjoyed the journey in the train and every time we feel whenever the train is uh, just uh, applied some brakes that uh, that brake is applied very smoothly there is no jerk you don't feel any jerk okay how the trains are just retarded in their motion very slowly correct i'm showing you <clears throat> when the train is moving the wheels of the train are set in rotational motion fine and whenever the driver requires to slow down the train you know what he does attach with those wheels there is a big uh, conducting drum on which through electromagnet he applies strong magnetic field through electromagnet the strong magnetic field is applied so for the drum because of application sudden application of strong magnetic field its magnetic flux increases suddenly and because of sudden change in magnetic flux it so happens that there are lot of eddy currents produced in them and because of production of large amount of eddy currents what happens large amount of lens force is exerted on the drum and that lens force you know it is a resistive force it is always exerted in a direction opposite to motion of the train that is how in the presence of that resistive force which is directly proportional to velocity of the train if more velocity then more lens force less velocity then less amount of lens force so train's motion can be retarded slowly and ultimately it comes to rest without giving you any sort of jerk okay so this system which applies smooth brake is due to production of eddy currents correct fine then we use eddy currents in electric power meter my dears at our residence we know there is electric meter provided from torrent power limited which measures a consumer has consumed in a span of 2 months how many electrical energy units the particular consumer has consumed just to measure that amount of electrical energy we have electrical meter and inside that electrical meter you must have noticed there is a shining metallic uh, light uh, circular disk which is set into rotational motion there is such a mechanical arrangement also whereby if uh, power consume at a given point of time if power consume is more if power is consumed with a greater rate then angular speed of that disk is more if power is consumed with a smaller rate slow rate then angular speed is less if there is no power consume suppose you just switch off the main switch which delivers power at your residence if you switch off that main switch then no power is consumed then that this will come to rest so ultimately using the how many rotations that disk has finished in a span of 2 months we can calculate the amount of electrical energy consumed and depending upon that we can calculate the amount of electrical units correct unit of how many units of electrical energy are consumed and depending upon that we can just estimate the value i mean in terms of money we can calculate the amount of electricity bill correct fine see eddy currents are also employed in galvanometer how i'm showing you <coughs> in case of galvanometer you must have studied that we have winding of some coil over some rectangular frame generally that rectangular frame is made up of metal and whenever there is a flow of current some eddy currents are generated in that uh, frame and because of production of eddy currents in the frame some anti torque is developed 
and because of that anti torque what happens which opposes the applied torque it so happens that pointer comes to rest very quickly. So, every time we are getting steady angular deflection of that pointer very quickly that credit goes to production of eddy currents correct fine. Such a galvanometer is known as dead beat galvanometer dead beat galvanometer fine. Let us see now further application of eddy currents that is in inductothermy or diathermy. Here we use eddy currents to provide localized uh, heating to certain parts of human body whenever we want to heat up them then we use this uh, eddy currents such a branch is known as inductothermy or diathermy fine. In one of the reference books I found one very good example not given in the textbook just for your kind knowledge and understanding look here consider a current carrying solenoid you know what we have done here we have connected a key and AC source AC source is that source of current in which the value of current and direction of current go on changing periodically fine. How are those periodic changes just to show that I have shown here one graph this is the graph of current value versus time from 0 to t by 2 current is increasing in one direction then it decreases from maximum to 0. Again from t by 2 to t current increases in opposite direction again after becoming maximum it becomes 0 fine. Now initially suppose we have kept one small metallic disc which is lying at rest on the top end of this cylinder fine initially. Now what we do we press this key when we press this key suppose current increases in this direction ok it flows this way correct this way and if that current is flowing this way then it will produce its own magnetic field. So now external magnetic field is produced this way correct fine that is a magnetic field of this solenoid ok. Now, it so happens that those field lines are passing through this disc when field lines are passing through this disc naturally it will have some magnetic flux, but because value of current goes on changing the strength of magnetic field is also changing that is the magnetic flux link with this disc will also change and that is how the magnetic flux of that disc will change and because of change in magnetic flux you know what will happen we will have production of eddy currents and here this eddy currents again they obey Lenz law if you observe from top they are flowing this way clockwise and when they flow clockwise this way clockwise then they will produce their magnetic field vertically downwards. I mean to say this magnetic field of solenoid and magnetic field produced by eddy currents they oppose each other. Here the top face of solenoid and here bottom face of disc they behave like identical magnetic poles. In this case they both behave like north pole and you know like poles repel each other. So, if this induced north pole repels this north pole then because of repulsion this disc will be lifted up ok fine, but as the value of current goes on increasing the repulsive force increases. So, this disc has to move vertically upwards more and more as the value of current goes on decreasing the repulsive force will go on decreasing and then this will come down fine. In the next half cycle you know what is going to happen same story will happen, but instead of this direction of current we will have opposite direction of current. So, now the current in the solenoid will be this way if current in the solenoid is this way downwards then magnetic field will be obtained downwards 
then in that case here it will be south pole here it will be south pole in that case what will happen the magnetic flux will be linked with this disk no doubt but because of change in the value of current again there will be change in magnetic flux again there will be induced south pole at the bottom face of this disk so i mean to say the poles which are induced at the top face of the cylinder and at the bottom face of the disk in this case will be south poles again both of them are south poles so again they are like poles again they will repel each other correct fine as current value increases the repulsive force will increase as current value decreases repulsive force will decrease i mean to say under the effect of changing result, uh, changing repulsive force this this will move up and down but it is constantly getting repelled by the like pole which is induced at the top face of the cylinder so this is how we call this disc as jumping disc this jumping disc indirectly proves the existence of eddy currents are produced in the disc in this disc because of change in magnetic flux eddy currents are produced and that is why this disc is keeping on oscillating up and down we call it jumping disc it is because of the eddy currents produced in this disc okay fine come on my dears let us finish the last article also that is about ac generator or ac dynamo or ac source before we go for understanding principle construction and working of this generator let me tell you about two types of electric current there are two types of electric current one is known as dc another is known as ac let me introduce both the types first of all let us talk about dc dc means direct current shortly it is called dc its full name is direct current it is a current which continues to flow in the same direction a current which does not change the direction of flow is called unidirectional current or shortly dc direct current correct fine its a magnitude may change may not change but so far direction is concerned direction of flow does not change it remains unidirectional that is why we call it direct current okay another is that type of current which is called ac full name is alternating current it is such a current which alters which changes direction of flow at the end of fixed time interval such a current is called alternating current about which today we will study okay fine a device an instrument or machine with the help of which we can obtain alternating current is called ac generator or ac dynamo or ac source okay now what is the principle of working of this device there are two principles one is electromagnetic induction another is conversion of mechanical energy into electrical energy which two principles one is electromagnetic induction and another is conversion of mechanical energy into electrical energy okay fine now let us see the construction of this device here is the construction look <clears throat> we have two rectangular magnetic poles of some strong and permanent magnet say out of two magnetic poles this is north pole and say this is south pole you know direction of magnetic field is always from north to south so at present direction of magnetic field is towards right hand side fine okay now in this uniform magnetic field we have kept one coil made up of certain number of identical turns which are wound on certain frame which can rotate about fixed shaft which can rotate about fixed shaft such a coil is known as armature what is it called armature that armature is shown here here just for the sake of simplicity and ease i have shown only one turn but you can just consider such identical n number of turns fine 
this is the coil which is also called armature its two ends are connected with uh, two metallic rings those circular rings i have shown in the figure and they are shown by the symbols a1 and a2 they are the circular metallic rings which can slide which can slip over these two carbon brushes because these two rings slip over the carbon brushes we call them slip rings so a1 and a2 they are slip rings and they slip over the surfaces of these two brushes made up of carbon so b1 and b2 they are carbon brushes okay fine now here between these two carbon brushes we are going to obtain some alternating potential difference alternating voltage and we are going to use that alternating voltage to operate some device might be some electric bulb so if you have connected here some electric bulb then here i have shown the resistance of filament of that bulb generally it is called load resistance load resistance the device to which you are going to supply this alternating voltage it is called load and its resistance is called load resistance okay fine now in this uh, construction this coil is given rotation about this uh, fixed uh, axis of rotation with some constant angular speed that constant angular speed is suppose omega now you know two formula for omega one is 2 pi by capital t another is 2 pi f what is capital t periodic time of rotation that is time taken by the coil to complete one rotation and what is small f frequency of rotation that is number of rotations completed in unit time okay fine now tell me here suppose initially that is at time t equal to 0 the orientation or the arrangement of the coil is something like this suppose okay so this is the alignment or orientation or arrangement of the coil at time t equal to 0 now you can see plane of the coil is this correct right? plane of the coil is this fine now this is the plane of the coil and you know area vector is drawn always perpendicular to area so this you can consider as area vector fine this is area vector and magnetic field is already towards right hand side already towards right hand side from north to south so this is the situation this is magnetic field correct this is magnetic field and in the same direction there is area vector also so magnetic field and area vector they point in the same direction okay fine now tell me when vector a and vector b point in the same direction then angle theta between them is 0 degree theta is 0 degree fine but now tell me what we have done here we are continuously rotating the coil magnetic field remains in the same direction but during the rotation of the coil what will happen the alignment of area vector will continuously change something like this look say this is vector b magnetic field say this is vector a initially vector a and vector b are in the same direction but later on what happens then magnetic field remains in the same direction but this area vector keeps on rotating this way when area vector is rotating this way you can see the angle between vector a and vector b will continuously change for example here theta is 0 degree correct now after one fourth of the rotation this area vector will be like this so now you can see this angle is pi by 2 correct same angle as shown here pi by 2 then at the end of half cycle at the end of half of the rotation area vector will be like this then this angle is pi radian this angle is pi radian correct here it is pi radian and then after at the end of three fourth of rotation area vector will be like this so now this angle is three pi by two radian three pi by two here it is three pi by two and 
then at the end of one fold rotation once again area vector will get aligned in the same direction of vector b so angle between vector a and vector b after completing one rotation will be 2 pi radian so this theta is 2 pi radian i mean to say the angle between area vector and vector b that is magnetic field keeps on changing continuously correct fine when angle is changing continuously what will happen just recall the formula of total magnetic flux link with this coil come on that formula was this capital phi equals to n a b cos theta just give me identification of each symbol what is capital phi total magnetic flux what is capital n total number of tons what is capital a area of one ton capital b is magnitude of uniform magnetic field and theta is angle between vector a and vector b now theta that angle you can always write constant angular speed into time angular displacement is equal to constant angular speed into time now tell me here in this case n is constant a is constant b is constant omega is constant but as time changes continuously this angle will change cosine function value will change this whole product will change ultimately magnetic flux will change and as the magnetic flux link with the coil goes on changing continuously you know from the phenomenon of electromagnetic induction whenever there is a change in magnetic flux link with any coil you know what happens some emf will get induced across the two ends of that coil that emf induced across the two ends of the coil is suppose capital v then don't you know faraday's law on electromagnetic induction that law was v equals to minus d phi by dt come on mathematically v equals to minus d phi by dt can you rewrite minus d by dt of a capital phi what is the value of capital phi <coughs> capital phi is come on n a b cos of omega t here it is n a b cos of omega t but because these three factors are constants you can take them out of the symbol of derivative so minus n a b now left is come on d by dt of a cos of omega t d by dt of a cos of omega t fine now tell me minus n a b as it is now don't you know derivative of cos is minus sine that's why i'm writing here minus sine of omega t but now again you should take derivative of this bracketed term and that derivative is omega is constant d by dt of t is 1 now minus minus plus n a b omega sine of omega t here it is n a b omega sine of omega t now suppose i want maximum value of this induced emf come on what can be that maximum value i am showing you if you want maximum value of v then you should take maximum value on right hand side but because these four factors are constants you cannot make any change in them then you should go for taking maximum value of the sine function which is 1 so when you write here 1 this will be giving you n a b omega which gives maximum value of induced emf so n a b omega is now replaced by another symbol another symbol is v m that is maximum induced emf fine <coughs> So in place of n a b omega we can write v m come on write it here in place of n a b omega I am just putting v m the sine function part as it is. So final formula of this voltage is v equals to v m sine of omega t come on repeat it v equals to v m sine of omega t come on tell me once again what was omega it was constant angular speed of rotation of the coil. And don't you know two formula for omega omega is equal to 2 pi upon capital d and 2 pi f where f is come on frequency of rotation of the coil that's why i'm putting here omega equals to 2 pi f got it come on now here we got two equations one is the equation of magnetic flux another is equation of induced emf now in this formula of magnetic flux there is a cosine function and here in the formula of induced emf there is a sine function now let us plot two graphs 
one is the graph of magnetic flux versus angle and another is a graph of induced emf versus angle come on phi equals to n a b cos theta same formula written here versus angle theta theta is how much theta is omega into t come on angular displacement is always constant angular speed into time and here v equals to v m sin of omega t but this omega t is nothing but theta so v equals to v m sin theta v equals to v m sin theta versus theta fine now here i have drawn these two graphs only for one periodic time that is up to capital t for one rotation of the coil how are the changes in the magnetic flux and in the alternating voltage that i am going to show you look this angle is 0 this angle is 2 pi radian half of 2 pi that is pi half of pi that is pi by 2 this angle is 3 times than this angle so this is pi by 2 and this is 3 pi by 2 come on similarly here also this angle is 0 this angle is 2 pi radian half of 2 pi that is pi half of pi is pi by 2 and this angle is 3 times than this angle so I am writing here 3 pi by 2 come on if you go on placing the values of theta pi by 2 pi 3 pi by 2 2 pi in this formula you will get corresponding values like this first of all put theta equals to 0 put theta equals to 0 here come on cos 0 is 1 so it will be giving you n a b which also gives you maximum value of magnetic flux so I am putting plus phi m then after if you place theta equals to pi by 2 here then you know cos pi by 2 is 0 so the whole term will be 0 phi will be 0 so that is how the magnetic flux keeps on changing periodically according to this cosine function similarly here if you place theta equals to 0 here in this formula sin 0 is 0 so v is 0 then after when you place theta equals to pi by 2 here sin pi by 2 is 1 1 into vm that is vm and that is how this voltage goes on changing periodically according to this sign function fine now tell me what this graph indicates in first half cycle the values of voltages are positive values of voltages are positive in the next half cycle values of voltages are negative now tell me ultimately what is this induced emf it is the potential difference which has arisen between these two carbon brushes correct between these two carbon brushes you are going to get that potential difference now that potential difference is changing alternately it is becoming positive negative positive negative like that so the polarity of the voltage between these two carbon brushes goes on changing periodically fine now instead of this whole arrangement what we do for our ease for our convenience we just draw circuit symbol this all together gives you a source whereby you can obtain alternating current that AC source in the circuit is shown by such a symbol look here this is the symbol for AC source fine now in this symbol you are supposed to draw a little graph of sine function fine now these two ends B1 and B2 I have shown here correct so now instead of this whole experimental setup instead of this whole experimental arrangement you can simply concentrate here this is the AC source having these two terminals B1 and B2 now tell me in this first half cycle that is between 0 to T by 2 between 0 to T by 2 the potential difference between B1 and B2 you are going to take positive let it be potential at B2 with respect to B1 if potential at B2 with respect to B1 is positive then potential at B1 with respect to B2 will be negative and you know direction of electric current is always from positive to negative so from this positive to this negative current is flowing this way this way means what come on tell me the path of the current B2 to B, B to C, C to D, D to A, A to B1, B1 to B2 correct so here you can see the direction of current is come on clockwise okay but that is the story from 0 to T by 2 what about in the next half cycle from T by 2 to T the potential difference becomes negative that is potential at B2 with respect to B1 will become negative that is shown here potential at B2 with respect to B1 has become negative so just speak reverse if potential at B2 with respect to B1 is negative then potential at B1 with respect to B2 must be positive and you know current is always flowing from positive to negative.
करेक्ट कमॉन बी वन टू ए ए टू डी डी टू सी सी टू बी बी टू बी टू बी टू टू बी वन एंड दिस डायरेक्शन ऑफ करंट यू कैन सी इट इज एंटी क्लॉक वाइज अर्लियर इट वॉज क्लॉक वाइज नाउ इट इज एंटी क्लॉक वाइज आई मीन टू से हियर इन दिस कॉइल करंट विल जस्ट चेंज इट्स डायरेक्शन ऑफ फ्लो ऑल्टरनेटिवली लुक इन द फर्स्ट हाफ साइकिल वॉट एपन्स B2 is positive, B1 is negative. Current is flowing this way. Look here, minutely, from B2 to B1, current is flowing this way. And from here, through the slip ring A1, it will flow this way. This is the direction of flow of electric current. Fine. Got it? Fine. In the next half cycle, what happens? B1 becomes positive. At that time, current is flowing this way. Look, this way. Correct, and then current is flowing this way from B1 to B2, and then after through this coil, current is flowing this way. Correct, fine. So this is how at the end of each half cycle, the direction of flow of electric current goes on changing periodically. Because the direction of current is getting altered at the end of each half cycle. we call such a current as alternating current and this uh, device this instrument this machine this experimental setup whereby we can obtain ac is known as ac generator or ac dynamo or in short ac source which is symbolically shown by such a symbol in the circuit diagram got it fine now remember what was this omega remember omega was 2 pi f but what is f frequency of rotation of this coil okay it is also called frequency of ac frequency of ac in india we have frequency of ac equal to 50 hertz in usa the frequency of rotation is kept 60 hertz so frequency of ac in india is 50 hertz frequency of ac in usa is 60 hertz my dear this device is also known as generator but depending upon the source of production of mechanical energy we have different types of generators look if you are producing the mechanical energy out of potential energy of water falling from a great height then such a generator is known as hydroelectric generator if you are obtaining mechanical energy by the com combustion of some fuel then we call that generator as thermal generator and if the mechanic energy is obtained out of nuclear power generator i mean out of nuclear energy then such generators are called nuclear power generators okay recently in india we have developed generators which can give you power at the rate of 500 megawatt mega means million that is 10 lakh so using this power you know you can run you can operate 5 million electric bulbs each having power 100 watt that is how the we have produced the electrical power with a very high rate fine <coughs> that is all about this ac source and uh, thereby we finish the theoretical part of this chapter thank you <coughs> my dear still i would like to make one point very clear how the angle between vector a and vector b keeps on changing with time i am showing you look remember the direction of magnetic field vector b we had taken in this setup towards right hand side remember from north to south the direction of magnetic field vector b is towards right hand side and that direction remains fixed but during the rotation of coil the plane of the coil keeps on rotating and depending upon that vector a also will rotate and that is how angle between vector a and vector b will keep on changing continuously i am showing you actually look this was the initial condition of the coil in which the plane of the coil remains vertical correct but then as this coil is given rotation this way then look here it goes on rotating this way correct and you can see as it goes on rotating what happens the plane of coil changes its uh, inclination orientation arrangement in the space and thereby 
vector a and vector b will keep on changing in the space vector b will remain same in the direction but as vector a changes its inclination then angle between vector a and vector b will change and as that angle changes look here as that angle changes continuously come on value of cosine function will change and thereby magnetic flux of the coil will change and because of change in magnetic flux you can expect some induced emf across the two ends of this coil correct and ultimately that induced emf will be obtained between carbon brushes b1 and b2 and that is how it becomes a source of alternating voltage got it